Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install the all new Raspberry Pi OS. I say all new, but it's really Raspbian with a name change. They've obviously changed it to Raspberry Pi OS. With the recent announcement of the new Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM, a lot of new people will be coming over to this little board trying to get a decent desktop experience. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly install the operating system to your SD card so you can get up and running with your new Raspberry Pi. But before we get started, there are a few things we're going to need. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. The 1, 2, 4, or 8 gigabyte model will work. You're also going to need a USB Type-C power supply. I recommend the official Raspberry Pi power supply. A micro SD card. 8 gigs all the way up to 256 will work. Personally, I stick to 32 and 64 and it seems to work fine for me. And finally, you'll need another machine to flash the Raspberry Pi OS to your SD card for your Pi 4. And this will work with Mac, Linux, or Windows. But as you can see here, I'm using a Windows 10 PC. But the application we're going to use to flash this OS does work with Mac and Linux also. All links mentioned in this video will be in the description. So first things first, let's go ahead and download the new Raspberry Pi Imager. We're going to go with the Windows version, but they also have Mac and Linux or Ubuntu. We're going to go with Windows. And we'll go ahead and install this. Really easy to do. It's an EXE that'll download. We'll just install and you can run it from here. I'm going to click finish or you can run it from your start menu. Raspberry Pi Imager. We're going to open this up and they've made this really easy to use. So operating system, we're going to choose our OS and from here we have a few options, but we're going to be going with the Raspberry Pi OS. As of making this video, they only offer the 32 bit version of Raspberry Pi OS in the installer. This will change down the road once the 64-bit version comes out of beta, but we can still manually download the 64-bit version and install it to our SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. Link for this is in the description. This is the post over on the Raspberry Pi forum for the new Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit edition. It's in beta as making this video, but like I mentioned, it will be added to the installer soon. And I'm actually going to go ahead and download the 64-bit version. Download here. It's one gig. Now, if you just want to strictly stick to the Raspberry Pi Imager, we can install the 32-bit version right here as of making this video. Really easy to do. We have Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. This is the recommended version. If we go down to Raspberry Pi OS Other, we have the light version, which does not contain a desktop. You can install one later on if you'd like to, but it will boot directly to terminal, so people who are looking for a desktop experience won't be using this much. And we also have Raspberry Pi OS Full. This is a much larger image and there's lots of great applications pre-installed. And if you're just starting out, I would actually recommend using this version here. It's a much larger download, but there's already a lot of great applications pre-installed and some of you might wanna use this. We'll go back here. We have Liber Elect, which is a media center. Ubuntu, now this only offers the server version. You can install a desktop on this, just like I mentioned with the Raspberry Pi OS Lite version. We've got videos on that. We also have utility images. You really don't need to mess with this unless somebody tells you you need to reflash your EEPROM. Erase, which will erase your SD card. And we have use custom. So if you did go ahead and download that 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, you can use this here. It's going to open up a window. You'll need to navigate to where you have it downloaded. Mine's in my download section. And as you can see here, Raspbian Buster ARM64.zip. So if I click on this, it's going to load that operating system up and get it ready to flash to our SD card. So this is the 64-bit version. But for most people out there, they might just want to stick with the recommended software, Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. So now that you have your chosen version of Raspberry Pi OS loaded up in the operating system panel here, we're going to choose our SD card. We'll just click on Choose SD. Now I personally know that this is my SD card, but if you have external drives plugged into your PC, you need to double check that you're really flashing to your SD card because you could go ahead and flash to a one terabyte drive here and overwrite everything on that drive. So just be careful with it. This is definitely my 32 gigabyte SD card. I'm using a cheap USB micro SD card reader. Now, if you've chosen a preloaded operating system, it will automatically download it and flash it to the SD card. Since I'm going with the 64 bit version that I've already downloaded from the forum, it's already on my PC, so it's just going to start writing to the SD card. Give this some time to finish up. It really depends on how fast your SD card is, your reader, and your USB port. 
If it's writing and you're getting the percent going up, it's doing the correct thing. When it's done, it'll prompt you. Alright, so the flash is now finished. All we need to do is pull the SD card from our PC, Mac, or our Linux machine, place it in the Raspberry Pi, plug in our HDMI, keyboard, mouse, and power. Alright, so let's go ahead and get ready for the first boot. I have my Raspberry Pi 4 here. I have my HDMI plugged in. I'm going to plug in that freshly flashed SD card. I also have a keyboard and mouse connected. We'll plug in power, and it's going to start up. Now, the first boot here is going to take longer than any other time you boot this up because it needs to resize the file system. Make sure you have your monitor turned on. And as long as the green LED status light on the Raspberry Pi 4 is flashing every once in a while, it is working in the background. Just give it some time to boot up. Like I said, with this freshly flashed SD card, it needs to get everything ready, so the boot is going to be much longer than any other time you start your Pi up. And if everything goes right, you'll be prompted with the welcome screen here. We got a little more setup to do, so I'm going to move this over to my game capture so we can get a better look at it. But we're almost ready to start using this as a daily desktop. Alright, so here we are at the initial setup of Raspberry Pi OS. This is going to give you a little walkthrough. Go ahead and read through all of this. We'll click Next. Choose your country, and I'm in the United States here. I'm going to use English language and I want to use the US keyboard. This is definitely important because it will revert to the UK keyboard and some keys are mixed up on that board versus the US version. You can choose your language and your time zone. Next. So the default password of the Raspberry Pi is Raspberry, but I definitely recommend changing this. I'm going to go ahead and change it. Make sure you remember your password. You're going to enter the password and then confirm it. Next, if you see a black border around your screen, like you're seeing right now in this video, make sure you choose this screen shows a black border around the desktop. This will take up the full screen once this is enabled and we do a reboot. Next, now it's going to search for a network. The Raspberry Pi 4 does support AC Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that 5 gigahertz network. From here, you'll just choose your network and throw your password in here. Personally, I use Ethernet, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And you'll see up here in the top right hand corner, Ethernet is connecting. So I'm going to choose skip. And now it's going to ask us to update the software. You have to be online for this to work. It's going to download all of the updates for Raspberry Pi OS. I definitely recommend clicking next. This will update your software and you have to be online for this to work. For this video, I'm going to click skip because it does take a little bit of time. But I highly recommend updating the software. Our setup is now complete, and for all the changes we did, which was mainly just set up the overscan here, we're going to click Restart. It's going to restart the Raspberry Pi, and that black border will be gone around the edges. And there you have it. You're now set up with Raspberry Pi OS on your Raspberry Pi. Mainly, this was geared towards the Raspberry Pi 4, but this works on the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 3B+. I think it works on the Raspberry Pi 1, but not a lot of people are running those anymore and you will get the best performance out of the Raspberry Pi 4. There's one last thing that I always like to change. I'm not a big fan of this really blown out desktop image that they use, so I'm just going to right click on the desktop, Desktop Preferences, and from here, I'm just going to go with Aurora. There's several to choose from, or you can just open up a browser and find a desktop background that you like. And to open up a browser, we can click on the web browser here, or we can use the Raspberry Pi drop-down menu. Programming, Internet, Sound and Video, Graphics, Accessories, and if you downloaded the full version of Raspbian OS, you will see a couple other sections in here like games, and there's some pre-installed games that you can mess around with, like Minecraft Pi and a few others. We also have a Help section, Preferences, Run, and Shut Down. If you want to shut down your system, choose Shut Down. You can Log Out, Reboot, or Shut Down. I'm going to go ahead and open up a web browser. This is using Chromium. And that's pretty much it for this video. You now have a fully functional desktop operating system running on your Raspberry Pi. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like I mentioned, all links for everything mentioned will be listed in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.